everyone I just wanted to do this quick little video on transferring images I think since IODs came out and their amazing popularity people have become much more aware of, of how good transfers can actually look I mean IODs they're a completely different thing they're a, a wonderful product but it is possible to print your own image out of whatever it is you want your baby your husband your dog, whatever it is, and put it onto a piece of furniture, uh, whatever, whatever, transfer it onto anything that you like. So just to show you what um, what I do, this is an image that I printed out on ordinary A4 printer paper, but I printed it out on a laser printer. Now I know a lot of you haven't got laser printers, but if you if you print your image out on on an ord on your ordinary printer, take this along to the um, news agent or print shop or wherever, and ask them to print it out on laser printer. I think it only costs thirty or forty p, something like that. So it's not much, uh, and then you'll have the image. The problem with printing it out on an inkjet is that once you put the glue on, it sort of softens the ink and it becomes a bit mushy, or it can do. I know people do have uh, good results with inkjet but I would definitely recommend a laser. So for the purposes of this I've used a blue tip sitting on some blossom, uh, just a pretty picture that I found online and I've cut it out quite close all around. So that's now waste and what I've decided to put it on is this little box. I haven't decorated the rest of it yet, I thought I'd wait to see what this looked like on and take my inspiration from there. What I will say to you about transferring um, images is that it will come out back to front. So if it's writing, I mean, for this it doesn't matter if the birds face that way or that way, but for writing it's imperative because your writing will come out back to front. And the reason is that it gets stuck down that way. And then you rub the paper off so the ink is left in the reverse of how I'm looking at it now. Um, I think it's going to be fine that way. So in preparation to stick the piece on, I've painted the top of this box. Um, well, it's cream, actually. It was the nearest thing to white I had to hand. You want it light. You want a light colour because if it's dark, it'll dull down the transfer. Same with decoupage, you need something light behind it to bounce the light up through your image. So this is this is cream. As I say, white probably would have been preferable. Then after you get your image on, it's up to you if you want to sponge around it, paint around it, whatever, or leave it. So all that we have to do is, I'm using Mod Podge for the purposes of this. You can use watered down PVA, you can use um, Liquitex gel medium, fusion decoupage and transfer gel they're all pretty much of a muchness really um so as i say today i just happen to have in my hand or two hand um some mod podge so that's going to go there i think fairly central so first thing i'm going to do is put my mod podge on my image and put it on the ink side. It, I know it seems wrong, but it's the ink side that it has to go on. Let's give that a good, a good covering. It needs it needs plenty, plenty glue on it. Right to the edges. Make sure that you haven't missed any bits. And then we need to put the glue where it's where it's going to go on the uh, on the lid. I'm probably going beyond beyond the bird and just check that you've caught everything 
because it is easy to miss bits and then you'll get a gap. So it's often best just to go back and give it another coat just to make sure that you have actually caught every last bit. So two coats on your printed bit, one coat on your thing that you're sticking it to and we're good to go. And so let's pick that up. It's now quite easy to tear it so go steady. Now I can see the bird just through there and I want it at that sort of angle. So we'll stick it on there like that. Now then, the next bit is really, really important. There mustn't be any air between the image and this because then the, the ink just won't stick. So use an old card and from the center, make sure that you're smoothing it down really well. Just wipe your excess off. Really push it down, not enough to tear the paper obviously, but make sure it's firmly, firmly affixed. And then if you just wipe off any, any glue that's that you can see around the edge. Because it'll dry and it'll just look, look different to the rest of the box. So, yeah, I think that's it. So there's no more I can do with that now until it's dried. And I know that people get hair dryers out and all sorts of things and say that it's fine. I've never had much success that way. The, the, the way I've had my best success is to just leave it overnight, come back to it tomorrow and we'll, we'll do part two. So that's part one and I'll see you tomorrow for part two. Bye. Hi there. So we're back again with this uh, transfer on this box that you watched me stick on yesterday. It's had uh, not 24 hours, but not far off it to, to dry and it, it, it looks like it's stuck everywhere. So what we do now is with a cloth or a sponge or your fingers or whatever, just dampen it. And as you do that, you'll, you'll see that the uh, image underneath starts to come through. So just, just moisten it. Don't uh, soak it or anything. The best paper to, to do this on, the best paper to print your image out on, is the cheapest paper you can find. The very cheap photocopy paper is the best, because what we're trying to do now is rub off the paper pulp and leave the ink on, on, on the box. So the less paper you've got to rub off, the better really. But that's it's beginning to, to get damp. And we'll start here. And you just take your pad of your finger and just just rub. Nothing more technical than that. And you see the see the paper pulp coming off. Now you don't want too much friction, so keep your finger moist. And just gent gently rub. We are trying to leave the ink on there. And that's it. There's nothing. Nothing more clever than that. And you just literally do the whole piece. It is unusual to do one of these without getting some loss somewhere along the way, um, which you can then paint in or fill in with a Sharpie pen or 
it's, it's probably not too obvious with something like this, but if there's writing on it and you, you missed a bit, then take a Sharpie pen and just fill it in. You can see this is coming out quite nicely. And you think it's quite nice like that, and then you leave it to dry and it, it gets a white film over it again because you haven't taken all the pulp off. And you just literally have to keep going at it until it looks like this when it's dry. This paper wasn't the cheapest paper. I made a, a, a mistake there. It's, um, it was quite thick paper. So I'll just get rid of those bits. But you can see it's coming along. And it is just the tips of your of your fingers in a circular motion. And it's sometimes best to get this first layer off, let it dry and then go back to it and try and get another layer off. Try, try not to get it soaking wet but try not to get it dry either because that way you get friction and you're likely to pull the, the ink, the print up as well so damp at all times This isn't something that you want to be doing in a hurry, really. If, you, if you're absolutely short of time, decoupage something on, it's much quicker. But this does give a, a lovely finish, a, di a different finish to decoupage. It just depends whether you think it's worth your time and effort to do all this. I personally think that, that it is. There's, that there are places where this looks really good. And if you want a specific thing, you know, a photo of where you were married or any, anything, any given photograph, then you can, you can do this. But as I say, don't forget to reverse the image. Otherwise, at this stage, you'll look back to front. Reversing the image is quite simple, I think, with Word and Photoshop. It's not a, it's not a complicated thing to do. Just don't forget to do it, because you'll come to this part now where you're wiping the pulp off, and you're, oh no, it's back to the front. So that's, that's the first lot of paper off. What I'm going to do is just let that dry and then we'll come back and you'll see it'll, it'll have gone all cloudy again and need some more paper taken off. But at the moment that's not looking too bad, it's looking nice. And I'll see you again in a short while when that's dry. Right, so we left it to dry and as I predicted, the, I haven't got all the paper pulp off, it looked like I had. But as it's dried, you can see it's dried with this white film over it. Um, that, that's what it looked like. And this is what we need to get rid of. Now, it hasn't gone cold in here. That isn't why I've got my gloves on. This is um, an exfoliating glove. Glove. You can buy a pair of them from the pound shop. So, then you know, they're not expensive or anything. But they just have that roughness on. For a... For a transfer this size, it's not really necessary. But if you're doing a whole massive transfer, your finger does get very, very tired by the end of it and quite tender. So these save that happening. So just dip your finger into the water again 
and it's the same process again. Just keep rubbing. I want to rub that paper pulp away. Make sure that you keep your finger, your glove or whatever moist because if you don't, there's always a tendency for it to lift the ink as well. And if you are wearing the uh, exfoliating glove like I am, just remember to go perhaps slightly more gentle. See how it comes off. As I say, this isn't a thing to do if you're in a real tearing hurry to get your image, but there's something really satisfying about it. I really quite enjoy doing it. See there, I'm getting a little bit of a loss. So leave that well alone. to look quite good now. Try and get rid of all the all the little bits of paper pulp if you can because they do they do stick and then it takes you ages sanding over them etc etc so that's not so bad I think that's quite a nice job really so we leave it like that and even if it comes back with another haze of the paper pulp, we're just going to leave it because actually once you varnish over it or give it a top coat or whatever, it's magically the, the haze disappears. But you can only do that when you've got a very, very slight haze left on it. So we'll come back and, we'll, and I'll show you what it looks like and we'll varnish it. And I'll just fill in that little loss um, that, that I have just so it all looks perfect. I mean, sometimes you don't want it looking this perfect, um, in which case take a very fine sanding, uh, sanding block over it and just knock it back a little bit, make it look a bit more shabby. The, the, the choice is yours, you know, have it perfect, have it sanded down, leave the losses as they are, fill them in. It's, it's, it's your transfer, it's your decision to do what you like with, but that's... That's that at the moment. We'll leave it till it dries again. And as I say, we'll come back and we'll put some um, some finishing top coat of some sort on it. It's looking nice though, isn't it? So we've come back to this again and you can see that it still has this film of, of um, paper pulp over it. If you want to, you can you can do the same technique again. Keep Keep wiping it back. That's when I seem to get my losses. And so I'm keen not to do that if I can avoid it. <clears throat> you can see that bit there's just a bit of acrylic where I've filled in the, the loss that we had before. But you'll see as you use a varnish or a sealer or whatever, however it is you choose to finish yours, that that cloudiness just goes away. For this I'm using French Chic Finishing Coat. Um, that, that's what I have to hand. It doesn't, any varnish, any anything will, will do. So we'll just put a bit on there. And you'll see then, as I brush it over, the haze magically disappears and it will stay that way. So there is no need to carry on um, with the threat of looming over you that you're gonna rub some ink off. It is important to seal this it is, you know, very, a, very, a very fragile surface, so you do need to finish it with something. Um, you know, can be ron seal varnish, can be anything you like, um, but make sure that you do put something over it to protect it. And that is transferring an image. How nice does that look? 
as I say, before you do that, you could sand it if you wanted to, to get a more distressed look. And that's very often nice, very often what we're trying to, to achieve. Um, but here, I'll just, I'll just leave it like that and I, I might do some sponging around it um, and finish, finish the box off as well. I think you'll agree. It's quite successful. It's not difficult. You can all do it. So off you go. And the next time somebody asks me how to do a transfer, I can send them to this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something. Um, and I look forward to you sending me pictures of the transfers that you've done. Please do. I look forward to seeing things like that. Thanks a lot. Bye.